I must confess that I didn't do a thorough research to see how legit that quote is. However, it wouldn't surprise me. One thing I do know is that Nietzsche really did enjoy walking and spent most of his time doing so while contemplating his powerful and challenging ideas. In fact, there is this small town in Switzerland where he would spend most of his summers and there's this place by the lake called the Nietzsche Stone. Uh, it is said that here is where his idea of the eternal return came to him. Now, I will not talk about that today, but I thought it was a cool way of starting today's video. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of that in another video. Now, if you remember my last video, which if you don't, link is in the description. Um, I mentioned there was one thing I left out that I thought was essential to my philosophical ed education. And this is the topic of today's video. So, we want to be in constant debate with ourselves and our ideas, constantly question them and aim to improve them. This I may further justify in another video, but for now, let us agree with that. Let us agree that questioning and developing our own ideas in a critical way, while seeking always their improvement, is a valuable thing in our lives. Which I hope most of us will agree, especially seeing what has been going on in the world lately, with all these social challenges that we're facing. Now, if we apply the two voices in our head method, um, we are already taking a powerful step in this direction. Um, however, I don't think this, is, this applies only to philosophical texts. I think it applies to any text or any piece of information we are presented with. Now, I have a tool that has helped me amplify the power of this method. And it is such a simple tool that you might think I'm joking. Ready? It's called a notebook. <laughs> now, a lot of us might have heard about these facts of Albert Einstein's life, which may be more myth than fact. And this is the one I listened to in high school. Now, a teacher said to our class that one of the differences between Albert Einstein and other people, and why his mind was so powerful, was that whenever he would have a question, a thought, or an idea, he would have a notebook where he would write it down to further pursue it. And while I'm not sure that Albert Einstein had this specific notebook where he would write these things down, I do think that this method of having somewhere to write our ideas down to further pursue them can have a powerful impact in our thinking. I can at least say that, to me, it has been one of the most powerful and positively life-changing uh, things I have implemented in my life. Now, let me tell you how I use these notebooks. Okay, so, notebooks. First I will talk about how I use them directly related to philosophical texts. Now, to me, I haven't truly and fully understood a philosophical text, or basically any book or text that I want to comprehend, until I have a summary on my notebooks. When I first approach a text, my essential tool is something to highlight with or take small notes. This helps, especially with philosophy texts, because they often have complex vocabulary or extremely long sentences. So what I try to do is to highlight the keywords and try to avoid uh, the connecting words. For example, as you can see here, the full sentences, just as the bee simultaneously constructs cells and fills them with honey, blah, blah, blah. And what I have done is that I have taken this sentence and I have created a new sentence uh, which is almost half its length, which is science works on this great columbarium of concepts, the graveyard of perceptions. And to me, I haven't lost the idea of it or the, the, main, the main importance of it. If there is a certain idea which seemed more complex to me and took me longer to understand, I may take small notes where I will write keywords or concepts that will help me to remember it later. And I often rewrite certain sentences in my own words. If I can closely relate this idea to a certain idea of my own, I may just write which idea this is so that I can later make a deeper comparison. 
Though I also take time to stop and think about this while reading, I, I try to not take too long. This is, of course, the idea is not too stimulating and I get a sudden rush of creativity. If this happens, I will start writing that down at the moment. When I finish reading the book, I already have a general notion of how the ideas relate to each other. Now, it is time for a deeper analysis, and this is where these guys come into play. I already have the sentences broken down into a simpler structure, where I have uh, removed the meaningless words, uh, considering the general idea. I will, in some sense, reread the book. However, I will be ignoring all these meaningless words or all these paragraphs that I thought weren't so relevant, and more importantly, I will be taking notes. Here, sentences can become much smaller than in the actual text, or much larger. I may just sometimes take a full paragraph and convert it into a couple of sentences or bullet points. Sometimes I may take a couple of sentences or even just one sentence and further develop it, relating it to other ideas of the text, the author, myself or other authors. My notes are partly fully analyzing the ideas on the text and trying to explain them and develop them connect them in the best way possible, and partly comparing and debating these ideas with other authors and myself. The key here is the last idea I mentioned, comparing these ideas to my own. If I completely disagree with what is being said on the text, then now is my time to have a say in the matter. I will write down why I don't agree and try to justify this, as if I was debating the author himself. If I fully agree, it is often important to not just say, okay, I agree, and leave it at that. I think it is truly important to analyze why we agree with this idea, why this idea resonates with us, and why we think this idea is reasonable. This is something that has become essential in my life, and something which has had an extremely positive uh, influence on my personal growth. This will take you to continually question what you believe in, what you know, and what you agree or disagree with. We must, of course, be completely honest and have no preference for our own ideas unless we think they are more reasonable than the author's ideas. Being humble enough to listen to ideas which may contradict your own and even more humble to recognize when your ideas may not hold up as you thought they would. This I consider to be an essential characteristic of the philosopher. This exercise of questioning and developing your own ideas when comparing them to other philosophical texts, if done always with the intention of improvement, I think will prove to be one of the most productive and positively life-changing activities you can implement in your life. Now, this is essentially what I do in my notebooks, but not only in the manner of writing, and that is why this is a two-part video. In the next way, I will further talk about the other ways in which I use the notebooks, which I am not exaggerating when I say they may be one of the most important activities I have implemented in my life. I will talk about this because I think it can truly improve your life too. For now, I hope this video is useful in your philosophical study. So please leave a like if you like this video <laughs> and please subscribe if you like my content. If you think this can help someone, please share this video. And for now, thank you all for watching.